So here's the film. Here's the premise. Mother and a father, right? Let's say Brendan Fraser and Deborah Messing. <laughs> Have a baby. They've got the perfect life, right? The okay. Brendan Fraser is a stockbroker. Uh, Deborah Messing is a stockbroker. <laughs> so they're well off. They're, they're well they're off. Good. They've got a lovely picturesque house. You know, trendy, but not cold. It's right. that kind of welcoming, modern look that everyone enjoys. Hey. Sure. They've had a baby. Their life is complete. They think everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. The first few weeks, the baby is, you know, doing its little baby thing. Deborah Messing's looking after it. Uh, Brendan Frazier. They, they're, taking, they're alternating time off work because it's a progressive modern relationship. You know, there's oh. no gender roles here. Sure. It's just a modern family with a modern life. And the perfect little family started together. And a dog. Of course, oh. they've got a lovely little... Pomeranian? One of those, whatever that one is, a pomegranate dog. <laughs> so that's all okay. good. That's Sounds all great. Fine. That's all Sounds great. Like the, Except, almost no story to tell, because it's so perfect. Yeah, you think. Yeah. Until one night, when Brendan Fraser is woken up by this voice that just goes, Hey! Hey, you! Sleepily, he opens up his eyes and just blearily looks around the room and looks across the bed where he sees the baby's cot. And the baby is stood up in the cot, holding the bars, right? And just like in Benjamin Button, <laughs> Willem Dafoe's face is in the baby's head. Just over its face. The baby's face is gone. And it's Willem Dafoe's face. Oh no. On a no. normal little regular sized baby. Newborn. It shouldn't be standing up. But it stood up holding the bars. Grinning at Brendan Fraser. And it just goes. Hey daddy. I need you to steal for me. And suddenly Brendan Fraser wakes up. And in cold sweat. Terrified. Deborah Messing's like. What's wrong honey poo. And he says. Oh Nothing sugar tits everything's fine i just had a bad dream and he looks over at the baby sleeping perfectly fine you know okay. sure god what happened right next night right mm -hmm. hey fucker egg <laughs> he wakes up and the baby is looking at him and goes yeah daddy boy this ain't no dream I'm an evil baby, and I need you to steal drugs for me from the drugstore. Cold medicine, I'm going to my ecstasy. And it turns out, over the course of the film, that this baby is no dream. It is an evil baby that only Brendan Fraser can see with the evil face. Oh. Everyone else is a normal baby. And as the film goes on, Obviously, the baby, like, starts just constantly wearing the Willem Dafoe evil demon face. But no one else can see it. And it's just constantly looking at Brendan Fraser, like, wagging its tongue out, going... <laughs> like that, and Brendan Fraser is stealing drugs for it. And it's just, like, cold medicine and stuff? Breaking into the pharmacy. He can just buy the medicine. He's a stockbroker. He's got plenty of money. I know, he can, so he can buy everything he wants. He's not even asking for a lot. Right. <laughs> But he is, the, the baby has threatened to stab Deborah Messing in the when he goes, I'm gonna stab your little wifey in the cunt if you don't steal cough medicine for me. So he is stealing cough medicine under cover of night for oh. the baby. Yeah. It's and, a real moral dilemma, they call that. Yeah. 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 And eventually it just gets worse and worse. And he's getting him to do worse and worse crimes until it's eventually like, kill for me! Kill for me! Kill for your baby! Like that. And eventually it ends up with him slitting the dog's throat and Whoa. burying the dog in the yard while the baby's pacing backwards and forth by <laughs> a cigarette, just saying, bury the body! You're gonna hide the evidence! Pop! Why does the baby... So the baby's hopped up on cough medicine. He's smoking in the house. And he's demanding that the dog, the dog be buried in the, in the backyard? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot like uh, Midnight in Paris, actually. 
uh, written directed by Woody Woody Allen. Uh, where at night your true fantasies come to life, whether you like them or not. Well, there you go. And that won that almost won an Academy Award. So this is yeah. a film in which the baby's fantasies come to life by making his dad do them. Right. Anyway, yeah. eventually he meets the Chinese man from Gremlins, <laughs> who tells him that an ancient spirit curse has been placed on Brendan Fraser and he needs to lift the curse. Uh -huh. like, but it goes wrong because he has to perform an exorcism on top of a cliff, right? And the baby attacks him. Is there a fight? Is there a fight? There's, scene? A, there's a dramatic fight scene <laughs> in which he. You remember in Attack of the Clones when Yoda's fighting Christopher Lee? It's a bit oh. like that. The baby's hopping around, jumping about, spinning its head around, going. Ah, 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 like that. So it's biting him. It's got sharp teeth now. And it's oh. biting his hands and his face and his Brendan Fraser hair. And eventually he kicks the baby over him, over the cliff. Fuck. And the baby grabs the cliff and it looks up and goes, Help me, Daddy! Help me! I'm going to fall into the rocks below! Right? Oh, yeah. And he grabs the baby's hands and he says, It's okay, you're going to be all right. I love you, uh, my baby. Like that. <laughs> And then the baby just goes, ha, ha, pulls a knife out of its diaper and tries to stab Brendan Fraser in the hand. And he just lets go and flings him. And he falls backwards into the cliff in slow motion going, <laughs> Not no, but... <laughs> sort of. I'll see your wife's cunt in hell. That's what he says as he goes down. That's his mom. <laughs> Deborah Messer, <laughs> he's so impersonal towards his own mother. He, he refers to the to his own mother as his father's wife. <laughs> Your wife looks pretty dumb today, that sort of yeah. thing. So, what, and what? Deborah Messing's there and she's crying, but she knew now by this point, because the baby oh. had tied her up and was going to sacrifice her to the Dark Ones, right? Ah, uh, satanic. So yeah. Did you mention that it was satanic before? Um, no, it is, though. Don't oh. worry about it, it is. And so she's, like, crying with, with relief. You know, she doesn't care about the baby anymore because it's evil. And that makes it okay that it's dead. Uh, and Brendan Fraser falls back, right? And he says, it's okay, it's okay, it's, it's going to be all right now. Except he starts hearing, ah, like that, right? And he looks down, right? And he just starts really panicking because he can hear the screaming, like there's this Willem Dafoe growling inside of him, right? And inside of him? Yeah. And he, he starts screaming. He's like, ah, oh, oh, I can hear it. I can hear it. And he pulls down his pants, right? He's his pants and his underwear and his, <laughs> his penis is erect. <laughs> Fully erect? <laughs> Fully erect. Okay. And he okay. points up at him, and then just this huge amount of spunk spurts out of his uh, penis, and the dick is pointed at the camera, so you see the spunk shooting at the camera, and just as it's about to hit the camera, you see Willem Dafoe's face in the sperm going, <laughs> like that, and that's how the film ends, with just this big Willem Dafoe spunk going in Brendan Fraser's face, going, Bleh! And the implication is that no matter how many babies he has, they're all little evil Willem Dafoe babies. <laughs> and that the, the sperm is so um, passionate, I guess you could say, that it could cause him to have a huge erection even at a, a very unerotic time. He's just killed his baby, so there's almost... But it no needs to be erect so that the sperm can come out. <laughs> well, sure, sure, otherwise it would just drip. I mean, I'm basically, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about the physiology of this, and I think the audience will be too intense uh, to care, but I didn't give a fuck. So, yes, you see this spunk come out at the end, just, with Willem Dafoe's face in it, and you're like, oh, fuck, the curse is in his balls. Okay? Yeah. And I call this film, Look Who's Talking For. <laughs> To capitalize on the on the audience that has been waiting for Look Who's Talking For, and this is the movie they wanted all along. They were they they, they went to babies, then to two babies, and to dog and babies talking, and now they want um, talking Willem Dafoe sperm shooting in 3D. I presume. <laughs> Yeah, at, I know. At, at the uh, at the audience. I think if there's one thing the audience wants, it's screaming Willem Dafoe's sperm. 
That could be the movie that turns the tide. That could be the film that finally breaks those, oh, well, if there's an ejaculating, real ejaculating penis on screen, that would be considered... Brendan uh, Fraser's real ejaculating penis. <laughs> yeah. As that a, man as, still sells movies, doesn't he? He, he could still ship tickets. Sure. He was, uh, I think, in like Journey to the Center of the Earth 3D. That was a hit. There you go. So, this will be similar to that. He was in... Tarzan, probably? Oh, no. George of the Jungle. <laughs> same very, thing. Very close. Yeah, same, same thing. Same difference. This, and very much like your, your Willem Dafoe pitch. So what do you think? What do you reckon? Look who's talking for. I'm not, even, <laughs> not even being clever with it. Like, you know, look who's talking again or anything. No, no. It's, it's just, just look who's talking for. You know, the Roman numerals. It was that or Baby's Day Out to Hell. <laughs> Uh, I Actually, like... I'll call it that. I, it's look who's talking for colon baby's day out to hell. To hell, yeah! Exclamation point. Maybe at the end there, get them excited. You know, know that you really mean it. Yeah, yeah. And and the tagline will be hell's gonna need a pacifier. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't do anything that bad. I he mean, makes because... Brendan Fraser kill a dog. That's not that bad. And he's about to sa- sacrifice Deborah Messing to the dark ones. But he, the, the the only part that's truly horrific is that your own sperm can <laughs> cause you to have an erection. Because it's almost true to true to life. Anyone who's ever had an erection knows that um, they can happen when you don't want them to. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, you've killed your baby. Your wife is crying. <laughs> you're holding her tight. You're like, this is terrible. This is the, the opposite of sex. This is the death of a child as opposed to... <laughs> Uh-oh, huge screaming erection i better drop my pants and underwear (laughs) (laughs) well will the audience see it (laughs) yeah and then it turns out not i thought you were gonna have the the head of the penis be willing to foe's face (laughs) which would have been scary too uh but to to have the sperm be that's all that's that's the next level yeah you took i think there's a question here yeah right you've thrown your baby off the cliff (laughs) Mm. It, it tried to stab you, and you knocked it down, and it went, ah, I see your wife's cunt in hell. Yeah. Right. You could have just picked it up, and you know, <laughs> you got to win the fight, even if it has a knife. It's not yeah. that- There's five minutes of him struggling to lift it up when it's fallen off the cliff and he's holding it. He's really struggling, and we just don't explain why when he it is a baby. <laughs> but yeah, you've thrown your only infant son off the mm-hmm. cliff. Your yeah. wife's crying. This is not an erotic time. You get a big erection. I think what's on everybody's mind is, is that pedophilia <laughs> or not? <laughs> How's that for a callback, ladies and gentlemen? You did it. You brought it in. Hey. You to the discussion. Cool Christmas, Voldemort. 